This is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. As you guys can see, got my hat on. It's a little bit cold out today. We're here in Dallas, Texas. This is the last video I'll be making from the Dallas, Texas area because I was here for the hemp convention. That's actually the last episode, so be sure to check that one out. And I had a, just a time for, to visit one place, so I decided to visit a microgreens farm, which is happening inside this house um, here in Dallas, right? I mean, pretty much from what I saw, the farmer's market's pretty much shut down. Um, this time of year, I stopped by a farmer's market that was claimed to be runs all year. And today, I, when I went by there, there's nobody there. <laughs> so um, yeah, it definitely wasn't happening. But I have been to Dallas many times in the past. And the challenge that I see with Dallas is that they don't really have a good local food culture, in my opinion. I mean, things are changing. That's happening slowly. But farmer's markets, you know, um, I don't see a lot of farmers at particularly uh, based on my experience here in Dallas anyways and so that can be challenging if you are a farmer or a grower and expecting to have customers stuff flock to you um, you know and you would create a successful farm so in this episode what I'll be showing you guys actually is a farm that's not in the front yard actually not even in the backyard here but is actually grown on inside the house um, the couple here basically converted their um, their dining room actually into a grow room to grow microgreens and actually funny enough uh, my video that has over 1 million views now I'm a million viewer <laughs> um, I made actually how to make over $100,000 a year in your spare bedroom growing microgreens and that was with uh, Larry in Baltimore Maryland I'll post the link down below that video if I remember and actually uh, the, the farmer here Tamea um, watched that video probably a little bit over two years ago and um, basically got Larry's system started trying to grow with Larry's system um, and it wasn't really working for him and then they basically went and got training from Larry came back and then they were growing great <laughs> and but they're not making a hundred thousand dollars a year so I want to cover that you know how much money they are making that they will publicly disclose that the you know uh, gross income and as well as why that isn't happening but also more importantly show you guys why they're growing microgreens which is not necessarily about the money right you know in my opinion there are no get rich quick schemes in life right you need to work for what you got you know i grew up in a in a middle class family both my parents were civil servants actually they didn't get paid a lot of money and my parents never really helped me out my parents didn't help me buy my first car i had to save up money to do that my parents did not help me to buy a house you know, I was not a rich kid, spoiled. I mean, my dad did help, you know, give a little bit of money to help me through college. But for the most part, I've had to really work hard for what I've gotten in life. And, you know, much like any farming venture, right? Well, microgreens farming is a lot easier than outdoor farming, especially this time of year in Dallas where the weather could really be against you. It is still work. You do have to apply yourself. And growing the microgreens is just one aspect that they actually have to actually have mastered here. Um, growing the microgreens, but another aspect that they really, in my opinion, haven't focused on as much as they should and or what they were taught from Larry and Larry's model for growing and selling microgreens didn't necessarily work for them here in Dallas. So this is what I really want to share with you guys uh, in this episode, how you guys could make a microgreens work if, uh, if a model that's being taught isn't working for you because there are many models. There's not just one way to do microgreens. You know, I've had videos showing microgreens growing you know, in a guy's basement. I've had microgreens growing where they grow in a living room or in a bedroom, and now I have actually a dining room. And there's many ways to do it, and there's many ways to market it. But in the end, if you guys are want, want to have a microgreens business, I want you guys to be successful at it, whatever definition of success you want to define. And the goal here is not necessarily about the monetary success. It even goes deeper than that, and something that's even more important to me. So anyways, uh, let's head inside the house and show the guys their urban microgreens farm indoors all right so now about to head in to Tamiya's microgreens this is just the front door actually I'm going to show you guys inside what it looks like but uh, here's the thing right Tamiya she has like a math degree and she used to work as an economic economist for some big large-scale companies but then she would be basically slaving her life away and have to do things that the company would say you know maybe you can't be on your cell phone right now because you're working for us you got to work really hard and all these things and you know she really didn't like that lifestyle or she was dictated to a lot and she wasn't really being paid what she's worth right 
Um, now her job is literally at home, which is a great place to have a, you know, a business. This is a home-based business where they grow microgreens indoors, controlled, so they don't gotta go out and like, you know, deal with the cold weather, the freezing weather here in the winter time. And it's really easy. And she might work maybe like, I don't know, part-time at this point uh, with her business, like instead of, you know, maybe like 20 hours a week, you know, on, on average. You know, so she's really not working like full time or 40 hours a week or anything like that. And of course, the more you put into your business, the more you're going to get out. But at this point, she works about 20 hours, so she has free time to do other things she wants. And I really, I think that is one of the joys of a business. You know, if you guys are currently working for somebody else you don't like, you don't like your job, right? Even if you got to gotta get a pay cut, right? And as long as you're still going to make enough money to do what you love and, you know, have a better life for you, even if you're not making as much money as you would like, that's all right, because when you're working for yourself, here's the thing, you could make less than what you're currently making, but more importantly, you could make the same amount of what you're making now, or you could even make a lot more than what you will ever be paid by somebody else. And that's where I really like business. Although you might be making less, you could also be making more. And the other thing is, um, Tamea has an amazing husband who basically has been the investor to fit all the bills. And while well, they did have to do a build out to make this microgreens farm and operation, invest in all the equipment, they basically paid for the equipment in maybe the first 10 months and even after the first year they made a surplus of actually around, I don't know, $10,000, $12,000 or something like that. So anyways, uh, let's head in the, inside and show you guys this small dining room which is basically about 11 by 12 approximately is the, is the square footage, not that big, where they basically have a microgreens business growing now for the last two years. Alright, now you guys are going to take you inside this house and man, I wish I had a nut house this nice. So anyways right behind that picture, right? If you look closely on the sheetrock, and I could tell because I kind of do the work, you could tell actually right there, it used to be open right there, it used to be open. So this used to be open to the formal dining room, to like the living room area, which now they have a wall, so it's a bit smaller and still decorated really nice. And uh, over on this side where they actually have a door, probably used to also be open, you could kind of see, if you look very carefully on the sheetrock, you could see the, the lines where they put in new walling. Um, but right here is the door, and inside here, is the living microgreens. And this basically this room most closely resembles the room that I visited in Baltimore with Larry with like all this exact siding, even like kind of like the same carpeting, even to, you know, having an air conditioner and a humidifier, the same exact lights, the same exact racks, using the same exact seed source, using the same exact containers, the same exact coconut, co uh, you know, matting, Everything has pretty much been duplicated, and that's the joy of Larry's system, so you don't have to go through and have a learning curve. Anyways, let's go inside the indoor farm, <laughs> which is uh, 11 by 12 feet, and show the eyes more. All right, so first, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and give you guys an overview of what's going on here. All right, so they just have the standard lighting, which is like for the dining room, they never really took out, um, and that's fine. And then the window, they basically... Uh, basically close it off because they do not actually want regular sunlight in here, right? They want to they want to control the lighting cycles in here. In addition, they basically put up, you know, um, the reflective on the walls to reflect the light back also that so they don't damage the sheetrock should there be any overspray of water. In addition, as you guys can see, two essential components. Yes, even if you live in the southwest, which are really arid, but especially if you live somewhere where it's really humid, like here in uh, Texas, you got to have a, hu a dehumidifier, which is that little small device there, plus an air conditioner because you want to have the right temperature mi for microgreens. I don't know how many times I've been asked, John, could I grow microgreens in a greenhouse? And I'm like, that's a very bad idea because you cannot control the environment for growing microgreens. You're going to be more risky at uh, risk to get like different diseases and dampening off and things because you're not controlling the environment. So inside here, once again, they have a dehumidifier. And the AC is set to the perfect 72 degrees. Your AC is set at 72 degrees in your house so that you will be comfortable. And the cool thing is, is that if we're comfortable, the microgreens will be comfortable. So these are like two essential equipment pieces. And also this is basically just an enclosed room in here. And actually they designed it really well because the husband's actually an engineer with, you know, all the electrical conduit. I mean, they even went a step above and beyond which it, with what they really need because they even have like a little controller here that can monitor if we touch the screen here 
This monitors like the temperatures and the times and all these different things. The exact temperature could ding their phone and send a message on there. And they got like a little router set up up there. I mean, really cool. They got the, uh, the filtered water in that little uh, dispenser there that they use to water. They have basically all the different seeds, all ordered from True Leaf Seed or Mountain Valley Seed in Salt Lake City, Utah. Remember, I'll put a link down below to the video where I visited them. And you can see all the different seeds they have being stored, lots of different kinds of seeds. And of course, you know, um, Tamea could also watch TV. Her son got her a t Christmas present TV so she could watch TV as she's working if she wanted to. Of course, she has a baker's rack with all her extra, you know, trays that are not currently in use, that are cleaned and washed and ready to go. She has the hydrogen peroxide solution. Uh, 3% very important it has to can't be stored in a clear container it also has a pH uh, balancer there and you know just a, a measuring cup of course some scissors she has a spray pump with basically just to water with and then of course on the top very important she has all the covering um, to cover the flats up to keep them in darkness so the seeds will germinate of course, they also, you know, do kind of tracking and can basically uh, track the grows, the different grows they have. They got some of the different uh, micros they grow are broccoli, kale, kohlrabi, cilantro, radish, leek, basil, arugula, mustard, borage, uh, let's see, uh, spicy mix, uh, pea shoots, red cabbage, nasturtium, sunflower, and fennel. Let's see, she has some brochures that I will go over with you guys in a minute. And here's actually the microgreens racks growing the microgreens. Now they just harvested, they just got back from a two week vacation and their business isn't like fully thriving, right? I was, I was surprised when I walked in here, I'm like, man, to me, these racks look pretty empty. Like I'd be growing a lot more microgreens because I would just want to eat a lot more myself. But basically they have the same exact, you know, lighting controller that Larry uses, of course, because it's all sourced from him as well as all the different, all the exact same lighting, his exact same NSF certified trays, as well as using his system for the spacing right down there, as well as the coconut coir mats. And I'll be, I'll be talking about the micros more in just a second. Of course, they got a nice little sign here. Living microgreens, taste the difference, organic seeds, pure H2O, no soil. And so that's the amazing thing about microgreens, you have to spray any kind of pesticides or use any kind of chemicals or even use any fertilizers and I'll show you guys more about that in a minute. And then over on this rack, up on the top, they basically use for storage and they have all the different containers that they will actually sell their microgreens in. And then down below here, this is their seeding rack. So this is the germination rack currently where they're being germinated. They were germinated just a few days ago. So let's go ahead and peek in and see what it looks like. So these ones are radishes. These are growing the fastest, I think like in a day or so. Um, you know, the top's gonna come off and these are gonna grow up to look, be looking like some nice microgreens. Oh, let's see over here, got some, uh, some other seeds germinating. They're just starting to pop. Let's see if we got this uh, row down here. Maybe these guys probably uh, germinating better. Yeah, you can see they're starting to seed out. Those are some elites. You can see just starting to pop out the shell. And here's the thing, man. The reason why you don't need any fertilizer on these microgreens is because all the nutrients, for the most part, are stored in the seed. And the seed has enough, uh, you know, nutrients in there to feed the plants, you know, for the first easy 10 to 14 days of growth, which is how long it takes for these microgreens to grow. And then uh, moving over here further, you know, they have their little storage of all the different coconut coir pads that Larry recommends. Um, to use which I think is very important and makes this really a clean and easy process to grow in I'm not a big fan of using like media like coconut coir or soil media can get a lot more messy because of all more problems although they do have a customer that requested them to grow sunflower greens and they tried many times to grow sunflower greens on these pads and it didn't work so then they basically uh, you know went to just grow in, in a standard uh, coconut coir and uh, basically organic soil mix that's down there um, yeah some things cannot grow on the pads alone that being said I would encourage you to have things standardized to basically just grow things on the pads 
because it's a lot easier and a lot cleaner. Um, so uh, along with the pads, you also have these little uh, spacers here, which go on top of the uh, NSF food grade plastic trays uh, to basically space it out so you could get the appropriate water and not drown out your seeds. Here are some finished microgreens that will just be delivered to a customer probably in the next 15 minutes. They just harvested these guys. And you can see uh, tomatoes, microgreens grown locally, grown pure, non-GMO, no fertilizers, no pesticides, no soil, no additives. Keep refrigerated. And there's their uh, contact info down there. Now the cool thing about these microgreens, right, and I'll explain how they basically set this up in here. There's the microgreens that basically just go to the top so it looks really neat and tidy in here. Then you see the little pad, and then they got this little thing on the bottom, which I'll talk about because actually I learned about that this trip. I was not aware of that. And these microgreens, as it sits, if you just take this and put it in your fridge at proper temperature, they can stay fresh for up to two weeks, right? Totally amazing because this is a live food product. You know, this is one of the reasons why I don't like cut products, and this is one of the reasons why I really like the pads because it is so clean, neat, and easy to harvest, and you're never going to be eating any kind of coconut coir or or any soil and I mean really have a contamination free grow so I do like that a lot then of course here are the pads actually later today after I leave they'll be seeding these out so the first step of these pads is basically you got to soak them in the pH adjusted water and these have been soaking so they're getting nice and moist you see they're draining off you want it you know you want them just drained out like not super wrung out like a sponge but you just want it to be you know, dry enough, and uh, you're gonna pull, they're gonna pull these out and then basically take a seed, uh, you know, and, and shake all the seeds on these guys once they're in the trays that they'll be growing. And then, of course, here's their stock of the empty trays that they got. And then uh, here is actually the old bamboo um, spacers that they, that they used to use that they used to have to clean that they no longer use. And so, I would recommend, uh, you know, for you guys getting away from those bamboo spacers. And using the all, all you know reusable plastic it stays a lot neater and cleaner and does not have the organic matter in there to rot and of course they got the bags I mean that's pretty much a tour of this grow room I mean basically everything they need to grow the microgreens are contained within here oh we didn't go cover like up over there they got some little timers at times of lights and all these things but actually I just saw this coconut basically matting material that just came into shipment so I want to show you guys more about it. Alright, so the first thing I want to say is that number one, if you guys are using Larry's system that I'm showing you guys here, I would encourage you guys to go directly to Larry and buy one of his racks. I think they're over a thousand dollars, but for the rack, you'll get all the rack and all the equipment you need to grow, including all the lights, the exact exact items you need to start growing. Plus, more importantly, Larry will include the two days of training for you guys which is priceless. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you just buy his rack and then go it on your own like they tried to do here. They bought his rack and they're like, we don't need training, they tried to grow here. And before they went to Larry to see how it was done, they actually had a humidifier in here to try to humidify the area because they had different thoughts on how to grow microgreens. And microgreens like humidity, that's why you, they grow in greenhouses and all these things and you, you know, in arboretums it has like nice humid rooms, but right? You don't want to grow that way because microgreens, you know, excess humidity can cause issues with growing microgreens actually. So there's special, you know, ways to do things. So yeah, definitely check the link down below. How to make over $100,000 a year growing microgreens. That's the video I went to Larry's and showed his exact setup. The cool thing is they just grew, they just bought the pads. Larry does sell the pre-cut pads that I showed you guys. But to save money, they pre-cut their own pads. But they buy these. Um, the coconut coir mats from Larry, right? And this is the one that Larry has basically vetted and researched and I don't know if this is changing or, or which one he's using these days, but he said these were ordered from Larry and this is what they got shipped to them and I was surprised to see the label on there so I want to share with you guys. I would encourage you guys to support Larry and buy these products through him because the products you're going to buy through him probably going to be the same price you're going to find other places plus you're going to support him and his work to basically make microgreens more accessible. That being said, I know some of you guys want to just try to find things cheaper on your own and because they just got the shipping in and I know what it is now, I'm sharing with you guys so you guys can figure that out. So this is Mother Earth Cocoa Mat 4x8 by quarter inch, 100% natural coconut coir fibers and it's uh, from mother-earthproducts.com and the product number is uh, 714724 made in Sri Lanka. 
And actually, this is exclusively distributed by Sunlight Supply. So Sun Sunlight Supply is a basically a major hydroponic grower. So in my estimation, this should be available at many hydroponic stores near you. I know there's lots of different coconut matting, you know, or cocoa matting that are matted, and a lot of them may not work properly. This is the one Larry uses, so this is the one I would also recommend you use, and you guys could find it on your own, or like I would recommend buy it from Larry. Anyways, I think what I want to do next, actually show you guys a bit more about the growing process of the microgreens, show you guys actually how they um, harvest their microgreens, which is super simple, super easy, better than any other microgreens farm that I visited. And then we're going to go ahead and interview the owner um, and, and show you guys more about why she grows the microgreens. So now I'm going to show you guys actually how they cut their cocoa mats, and actually that's with this guy. It's a works WRX, and it looks like a zip snip. So this is a handy little vice zip snip. That's how they, I've never seen one of these before. <laughs> kind of cool. All right. So, but now I want to show you guys actually how to grow microgreens, right? So microgreens, it's not rocket science, guys. If you've never grown anything before, you guys can grow microgreens, especially if you do it Larry's way, because he's basically taken out all the complication and all the learning out of it. You don't have to learn how to figure stuff out to do on your own. You just need to follow his specific system and do it exactly like he explains it to you guys and you will be successful like they are here you know before once again before they went to Larry's training they were just not having success it wasn't working even though they're using the exact same seeds the exact same lights the exact same trays everything was duplicated that's Larry's doing except the procedure right so the procedure is super critical the process super critical if you watch one of my favorite uh, people on TV Marcus Lemonis right he talks about the process when going into businesses a lot, and it's all about the process, and he helps businesses refine their process to get it more efficient, and that's simply what Larry has done for microgreens. So although if you use these same seeds, if you don't have the process, you could fail, you know, ridiculously. So first step is microgreens start out with the seed. The seed is probably the most important process of the whole microgreens growing process because if you don't have healthy seeds, good seeds, seeds that are destined and meant for growing into sprouts or microgreens, you're not going to have a high level of germination. You may also have contaminated seeds. Sprouting seeds have been checked for different like mold and bacteria, so they're going to be safe seeds and so that you know you're going to produce a good product for people. So uh, you know, uh, Larry recommends a True Leaf Seed or Mountain Valley Seed Company, uh, which would, I would also uh, concur. I mean, that's pretty much every microgreens grower that I use that I go to, that's the seeds they use and that's the seeds I'd recommend to you. Now the one thing I would recommend you guys do also is try to buy organic seeds whenever possible. The other thing is try to buy seeds heavy for their weight. So for example, instead of buying broccoli seeds, and I'm just going to make up numbers here, that are 1,000 seeds per pound, you want to try, bro you want to, try to find broccoli seeds that are 750 seeds per pound. Now why would you want to buy less seeds per pound. But John, if I get a thousand seeds per pound, I'm getting more seeds and I can germinate more flats. Now the challenge I have with that is that because you're getting more seeds per pound, that means each seed is a little bit smaller. And because each seed is a little bit smaller, that means there's not going to be as much you know, seed germ on there or as much basically stored nutrition because the seed's going to be smaller, right, than if the seed was larger. The seed's larger, there's going to be more stored nutrients in there so you're going to have, high, uh, you know, healthier microgreens that you'll be growing and uh, you know and and basically there'll be more nutrients in there and you'll have a better time at doing it and I want to stop right there too is another reason for this farm is not they didn't actually start this to you know make make a hundred thousand dollars a year now if they made a hundred thousand dollars a year they definitely wouldn't complain they're currently making thirty thirty six thousand dollars a year consistently right once again, once again this build out costs about $25,000 to basically enclose a room, buy all the equipment, and they didn't like buy tons of equipment, right? The room kind of looks sparse in here. It only has like one, two, three growing racks at this time, but they basically designed it so this could fit up to 12 growing racks, but they haven't expanded that into that yet because their main focus is basically they got into growing microgreens because the owner's mom, Tamea, she had cancer. And to me, I had to then research like how, how basically about cancer and health and all these things. So she found out that, you know, eating healthy is critical for, you know, cancer surviving and that broccoli sprouts or microgreens are highly 
basically anti-cancer foods and are basically, you know, I see food as medicine and microgreens are probably one of the most powerful foods that are also a medicine in my opinion because they can have plenty of beneficial effects according to scientific published study research that I've reviewed and read in the past. And so they just wanted to have that for their family but also more importantly make these you know, cancer fighting foods available for other people in the local area. And unfortunately, what they did not realize is that they live in Dallas, Texas. And in Texas, there's probably more meat eaters than anywhere else in the country because after all, it's known for Texas and, you know, longhorns and, you know, meat and all these things and barbecue and all these things. I mean, Texas famous for barbecue, man. And so a lot of people don't really, and especially here in Dallas, right, it's just like more standard American diet fare, so many different restaurants, fast food joints you could eat out, out at, and people just aren't really into health, frankly. You know, there's not a lot of people into health uh, here in Dallas that they found. And also, too, the farmer's markets are very poor. So one of the tips I want to give you guys, if you guys are looking to start a microgreens business, right, check your local farmer's markets, right? The more bustling the farmer's market is, the more real local farmers, not just people reselling produce they bought wholesale and reselling it, the more local farmers are actually at the farmer's market selling, the more successful you will be starting your own microgreens business, right? Like here in town, if you go to the local farmer's market in Dallas, like the big one in Dallas, I've been to many times. I think last time I was there, I saw maybe two real farms, maybe three real farms that were there in all the other Vendors were basically selling, I mean, I would call it junk food, processed food, whatever you want to call it, or just resellers of vegetables they bought wholesale. So they weren't really farmers. So I would say that that's probably not the best place because the market really won't support local farmers because there's not a lot of them there that are there consistently year after year. Now the other thing I'll say is that Larry has basically, uh, his model is going from farm to restaurant directly, right? And that's, so Larry doesn't even deal with, you know, uh, retail customers and so that works for him in Baltimore Maryland where they have more of a local food culture right number one number two there's a lots of small owned you know uh, restaurants with local owned you know chefs that want to support locally owned produce in addition there's a lot of more people in the Baltimore area that eat uh, you know natural foods and healthy foods maybe it's a bit more progressive there as well so, you know, for Larry, that's worked really well for him. But then when they try to go down to restaurants here, they find a lot of restaurants are more corporate and they get just shipments from Cisco and they can't use outside vendors. And there's not a lot of small local owned restaurants for them to market to. So that avenue of selling did not necessarily work for them here. So they have to actually adjust, you know, what they're doing. And they're currently in the researching stage to try to figure out what to do next and how to reach more customers. So the next step in growing healthy microgreens is having a good water source, right? So they don't have any kind of hoses running around the house or anything. But what they have is they have a water and basically like just one of those uh, drink dispensers, Rubbermaid. And then we can take this top off and it's actually filled to the brim. Well, not quite filled to the brim. But basically there's water in here and it has basically an air bubble in here, which is really cool. So they're bubbling the water, increasing the oxygen content in there. In addition, this is filtered water and it is pH balanced. So these are very important topics that sometimes go overlooked. You know, I recently visited a microgreens farm that's actually not pH adjusting their water. And in my opinion, that is critical, right? You've got to pH adjust your water. And in my opinion, you also should be using a pure water, not water from the tap with all the different chemicals that are not filtered that have chlorine and um, potentially fluoride and all these other things in there. And then aerating it off the top so this way they could water all their crops with the cleanest purest water ever all right so aside from the seeds and the water which are the main things you really need right you need a few more things right you're going to need next the growing medium right what are you going to grow in you know you could use compost you could use some kind of coconut coir you could use a potting soil you could use a seed starting mix there's so many different mixtures you guys could use to grow microgreens and that being said what would John use? Well, I know this is limiting on some factors, but on other factors, it makes things quite easy and simple. I mean, personally, if I was going to microgreens, I'd want it to grow it as cleanly as possible. Trust me, I've harvested lots of microgreens growing in soil, and I always seem to get some soil mixed in to what I'm eating, and I really just don't like that. I think it's kind of messy and dirty. And so actually, I would use these cocoa mats that I showed you guys a little bit earlier. These are cut to size with that little uh, zip tool thing, the work zip tool. 
and then uh, they basically soak these as you guys see earlier and they're growing the microgreens on there now here's the thing every different growing medium has different pros and cons and you need to figure out what's the pros and cons of each of them for you you know there's lots of pros to using these mats number one they're very easy to deal with um, I guess one of the cons is that they can be a lot more expensive than just using some coconut coir fiber that you buy locally. The other thing I like about these pads is that they are very clean to use, right? So there's no dust or debris or coconut fiber or soil that's going to drop and get messy everywhere. Another thing I really like about this is when you're ready to harvest, right, you can just take this whole, whole pad with all the greens attached with the roots running through the bottom, which I'll show you guys in a second, and sell the whole pad to the customer, right? Um, these pads, they retail these, these a complete grown out pad for $10, although I was just recently in Miami, Florida, and the guy down there sells them for $15 and sells out every week. So hey, if you're going to start one of these businesses, do it in Florida because the, a few things can combine there. Let's see, there's uh, rich people in Miami that are health conscious and they are wanting to eat my greens. And so wow, $15 a pad, that was incredible. So $10 I think is a good standard price to charge for one of these guys. And the other interesting thing they did one day here at the farmer's market is that they found out price actually didn't make a difference because they were selling these guys for $10 a pad and they just wanted to go home early one day. So they're like, we're just gonna drop our prices in half. So they dropped and we're selling these guys for $5 a pad and they didn't even sell any. So they found out the deterrent wasn't necessarily a price. And what I think the deterrent is for most people, especially if you don't know what microgreens are, microgreens are like eating Aliens. Well, people don't. Well, probably more people know what aliens are than microgreens, because we've seen all those alien movies, right? <laughs> but people don't know what microgreens are, so you got to educate them on why they're important. I mean, one of the techniques I would use is sampling. Give samples to people, so they would give samples to people at, my, at the at the farmers market, and they found 90% of the people that tried the microgreens actually liked them. 10% did it, and that's fine. But why does Costco use sampling to sell more products because they know it works? 90% of the people that like them, but even then, of the 90% of people that like them, only like 20% of those people actually bought the microgreens. So, you know, that's not a super high conversion. So, like, my question is, you know, why didn't they buy the microgreens? You know, and that's a good question. I think the main thing comes down to you know, money and education and why do people need to eat microgreens, right? Most people think they don't need to eat microgreens, but they have a need to, you know, eat chips and dip in guacamole and drink beer on Super Bowl day. <laughs> That's a whole nother topic. So anyways, uh, yeah, getting the right pads, pros and cons of these pads, I guess. Uh, a con another con of these pads is that you can't grow any seed on these pads. Certain seeds really grow well on these pads and certain other seeds do not. So, you know, I would focus on the seeds that grow well on these pads because these pads are so important for me to use because it's so clean. You can sell the whole pads and serve the trays live, so you're also doing less processing because once you start cutting greens and all these things and processing it, you may need to have different certifications depending on where you live. And uh, yeah, so it's just easy and convenient, man. Go with the pads. Now, of course, aside from the growing medium you need to use, you need to grow in the trays. So the trays here, um, you know, these are basically um, food grade safe trays because actually these are made for proofing, I think, pizza dough. And I think I did read these off one day, the, uh, the brand name. Once again, I encourage you guys to go through Larry, but you could get these from Domate, but I think Larry has the same exact price. And this is the PT7 um, made in plastics. It's a domate.com. And the website is domate.com if you guys want to get these trays. I like these trays because they're food safe plastic. I mean, they're meant to hold food to basically um, proof the dough when they're making pizzas and whatnot. So uh, good enough to grow for microgreens. Also, these are not like this cheap 10 by 20 plastic trays I could break that are basically disposable that are creating more landfill waste. You know, this is the exact same type of uh, food grade plastic you want to use that will last for many, many years. I mean. You guys will just buy these guys once and here inside a you know indoor farm. I mean, let's face it, they're pretty much gonna last forever. So that's amazing. So you gotta have the right trays. And oh, let's go over the next most important thing about a microgreens farm. So this shop's gonna be a little bit dark for me, but light on the microgreens. The next most important thing about growing microgreens is you need to have the proper lighting. John, what's the proper lighting? Well, yes, of course, you can go down to local Home Depot and buy some fluorescent shop lamps or go to Costco, get some LED ones. 
and they're all going to be a little bit different. Now, will those work? Yes, they absolutely will work. But if you, once again, you want to duplicate Larry's system, you got to duplicate everything exactly as Larry does it. And Larry sources these special lights that are actually quite bright, maybe blinding the, blinding me and blinding the camera potentially, um, to grow the microgreens. And these grow the best microgreens, also their most, um, you know, sturdy and uh, long-lasting lights that he found. And that's what he recommends. Basically, uh, they're just single tubes. Then he recommends two tubes, two tubes per per, uh, per shelf there. And then, of course, he has the controller box here. This controller box, basically, all it has in here is basically a power supply. And this power supply can basically feed many, um, you know, many different lights on here. You can see all the different wires coming out on the bottom here. And so that's the kind of lighting you want to get. The special lighting. Once again, Larry's system is totally, completely dialed-in system. Get his system, and more importantly, go for the training, and uh, you're going to be up and growing pretty much successfully if you do exactly what he says, anyways, in terms of the growing. Now, here's uh, some of the microgreens grow. We're going to go ahead and pull this out to you guys. I really like that they're on now these little standoff trays that he has, and this is literally the microgreens as they grow. These are ready to be harvested. You can see the roots coming out the bottom there, and these are on the, on the little clean pads here, so we're just going to go ahead and rip that up. And look at this, I mean, this is super neat and easy, right? I could take a scissors and just cut these off and there's no coconut coir dust that's gonna go away. I mean, once again, a whole little um, you know, pad of the micros. This could sell for $10. So on one of these trays, it grows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these guys. So basically at that point, each tray is gonna net you $80, right? And so it costs significantly less money in seeds and the materials to grow. So, you, I mean, that's, that's a really good, strong markup here. And the other cool thing is actually uh, once you grow them out, and this only takes 10 to 14 days to grow your harvest. So literally this is like printing your own money. I do not recommend doing that. That's uh, in violation of federal law. But you could grow your own microgreens, and now you just got to find customers to sell them. So once you do, let me go ahead and show you guys how they box these up for customers here and how they can last for up to two weeks in the fridge because these are still alive and growing with the roots coming out the bottom. All right, so now I want to show you guys actually how they pack these and have them ready for sale. Once again, they got the standard flight. You can just hand it to somebody, but it gets kind of messy. I think the proper way to package this is so that it looks nice. Also has like a label to share with your guys at this farm so they can reorder. Um, and basically how they do that, instead of just putting this in the tray, they use these special um, pads here. This is called these pads right here. This is actually called the tight dry pad. I guess they use these in like meat. So like below below the meat, it absorbs all the blood, so it doesn't look nasty in the packaging. Because nobody wants to eat blood, I guess, unless you're a vampire. <laughs> so they got to collect all the blood in there, so it doesn't get all messy. So these these tight dry. So basically, what these tight dries are, they're basically tampons for your microgreens, man, <laughs> because it absorbs all the all the excess water. So they basically put one of these in the little container and then they take their sprayer and they basically spray it down a little bit just to get it moist and make sure you put the right side down. It says this side down on the pad. And then now this has a nice little environment that they then put the microgreens on and they basically close up the box and snap shut. And now as it is like this, right, this is the best way and the only way I would encourage you guys to buy microgreens and more importantly sell them because now you're going to have a product that could last up to 14 days, probably even more technically, but up to easily 14 days like this because it's still living, right? You put this in a cold environment, these guys will kind of go dormant, they're not going to grow, they're not going to get bigger, um, but they're going to stay fresh for a long time, whereas cut microgreens can degrade fast, they start losing nutrition. Think about it, if you're cut in half and somebody just gave the top half of you to somebody, you're not gonna last long until you bleed out. And that's why I don't recommend cutting out your microgreens either. You know, So I really like how these are whole complete microgreens in a little clamshell that they can easily sell and uh, you know, a profit from. But more importantly, change lives because of the health benefits people will get if they include microgreens in their diet. All right, so now I've basically showed you guys actually how my greens are grown. It's not rocket science, it is really easy. You just need to make sure you have the right exact process and duplicate that process each and every time to have success growing my greens. Now, if you're gonna have a my greens business, right, then you also need to learn the business side of things, 
which may or may not be different than the model that Larry shares. So Larry shares a restaurant model where basically you're selling to order to restaurants and that they are buying what you guys are growing. And I think that's a great model if that'll work for you in the city that you live. Um, another model, of course, is you can just go to farmer's markets, right? So they tried that now for over, over a year or maybe two years. They tried going to farmer's markets, right? And they saw that they sold very little at farmer's markets. It might be due to this area. I mean, if I've been, I mean, I went to one farmer's market in, in Colorado outside Denver. They had three microgreens farmers at that market and they were all selling. So they must have all been successful. So, but there's a big local food movement in Denver, much like, you know, if you lived in New York City, right? Or California or Miami, Florida, where there's, you know, a richer population and people are, tend to be more, you know, health conscious there. You know, you can be successful. But what if you live in Fargo, North Dakota, or out in the middle of the sticks where there's like really no local food movement? Can you have a microgreens business and can it be successful? I mean, I would say yes, but it's gonna be significantly harder, you know, or where there's no restaurants. So you gotta do things a little bit different. So they found by basically going to the farmer's market, that didn't get them to gen generate the revenue or business that they wanted. In addition, some of the farmer's markets they went to they had to be there all weekend and they wouldn't make that many sales. So they found it just really wasn't worth their while. And then they started trying to like figure out that now we got to figure out the marketing on our own to try to sell these microgreens to people so we can keep this running. Although once again, the money isn't that primarily primary motivator. It's to basically get healthy food out to local people that would not ha have the availability otherwise. So they've done many things online, social media, and I don't know all the exact things. Maybe we'll, we'll ask to man in a little bit. But they did come up with this brochure here. And so like, wow, they got a nice brochure. That means they're going to sell lots of microgreens, right? Well, maybe not so. It depends on what your brochure says. You can have a nice brochure, but, you know, here's the thing. You know, I will, I will say that I went to school for marketing, um, business management marketing. That's what my degree is in. I have a marketing background. I started my first business when I was 16 years old and you know I have lots of ideas about things I, I, I strongly know the whole gardening movement and local food movement and organic movement a lot myself and if you look at this brochure yeah I mean it looks really nice man it's got some nice pictures in there there's a picture of the farmer that you'll meet in a second and actually she looks better than the picture there so I said you need to update your picture um, the different kinds of microgreens she grows there but the first thing when you open this, yeah, it says Tamiya's Microgreens, Microgreen Policy with her phone number, her website, and all this stuff, her email, which is good. But the first thing you read when you open it up is Tamiya's Microgreens. Each growth cycle takes around 10 to 14 days depending on the product. If you are ready to incorporate microgreens into your life or business, please contact us. We always have a wide variety of microgreens available. Just send us an email or a text or give us a call direct between the hours of 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. And I mean, really, to me, there's like, to sell microgreens, since it is basically a new vegetable, people don't know this vegetable, and if you're selling like collard greens in the south, people know what collard greens are in the south, so it's going to be an easy sale, but people do not know, especially here in Texas, where, you know, you know, people eat more standard American diet, they don't have any idea what microgreens, so like instead of just going in for telling everybody how long the growth cycle is, I would say, you know, microgreens are a very nutritious food. I would say something like most Americans don't eat enough, or actually it's probably like, I think the statistic is about 10% of Americans, only 10% of Americans eat the recommended servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And microgreens does count for one of your vegetable servings, as well as microgreens are one of the most nutrient dense foods on the entire planet, four to 40 times more nutritious than standard sized vegetables. I'd also put something to the extent of, yeah, you know, we have many customers that are buying our microgreens that are that's helping them with their health conditions. Of course, I always list also list benefits of eating the microgreens. You know, published scientific journal studies show that broccoli microgreens can be effective against cancer and kills cancer, which is quite amazing, as well as other um, brassica family microgreens such as the radish sprouts, even the onion family, the leek family, which are also really easy microgreens to grow, also very anti-cancer. So I mean. You really got to promote the benefits. Why should people eat microgreens? You know, if you're going that direction for health, clientele, which I think they're going for here, you guys are promoted to chefs as being, you know, a fine, exquisite, unique, complex, you know, uh, powerful flavors for foods. There's so many different ways you should do it. But really, I mean, as a microgreens farmer, in my opinion, 
you're not a microgreens farmer first, right? You need to be a business person, but more importantly, you need to be an educator, right? People do not know how to use microgreens. If they have a whole, you know, a whole little, you know, pad of microgreens, how are they going to use it? Well, if you're John Cole, you can check my Instagram, <laughs> uh, Growing Your Greens, at Growing Your Greens. You know, I'll just take the whole pad and just start chopping into it and eat it raw, fresh, you know? That's how I eat it, but most people would never do that, oh my God, because that's not proper, right? <laughs> Um, they might want to cut it off and put it into a salad, add it on a salad. I mean, restaurants, for the most part, just use it and top it off as a garnish and put it on top of things or maybe add a little bit to the salad. But that's not even the way I want you guys to use it. I have a video, I'll post a link down below, best way to eat microgreens, which is in large quantities. So if you have a farm here, you know, I want your, you and your family to eat, you know, several pads, two to three pads a day each, right? Each person. These should, especially if you're growing them yourself, you're not selling them, you gotta do something with them. Eat them yourself, get the most benefits so you can offset the food miles that you're eating by eating more local food, some of the highest quality food. But basically, I mean, some ways to really use this stuff the best way, if you have lots of pads, I would juice it. If you're just a home consumer trying to juice pads, I would not do that because you don't have a lot of pads to juice and it takes a lot of pads to make, or you know, to cut microgreens off one pad to make juice. I would do what's called vacuum blending them to create the highest nutrition, also just have salads of it. You know, so really, uh, the farmer here really needs to now be an educator. So what I would recommend is going out and giving free talks to different organizations, whether you're going to go out to, you know, different health, you know, communities or clinics or yoga centers and give talks to people that are more readily accepting that diet does make a difference in your health and educate them about my greens, how to grow them. So you want to always give, you want to always give more than you receive. And if you give more than receive, I believe you will also receive in the end. So maybe have just how to grow microgreens classes to let people know, hey, you could grow your own microgreens. We could supply you with these, you know, products to do so if you want to start selling some of the items that grow microgreens. Or you could come in for personal training with us, um, you know, and charge a lot more to do that. So they could diversify the source of the income from the business besides just selling the microgreens. They could do, you know, free classes. They could do paid classes. Um, but also, more importantly, in the free classes they give when they go out somewhere, they can teach people how to grow microgreens, which is good. I mean, and honestly, most people don't have the time or want to grow microgreens themselves. But at the end, then, you could also show harvesting microgreens. You could show how to use them. And so, literally, become a chef, how to use them and make them taste good in recipes so that people know how to use them. Because if you don't know how to use them, they're not going to buy them <laughs> because they don't know how to eat them. And then, uh, you know, show people how to eat them. And then at the end, you could, you know, just say a little blurb about your business. You know, if you don't want to grow them yourself and you want to have access to this amazing food, I mean, you could literally weave into your educational classes that you give for free. It's really kind of marketing, in my opinion, um, um, to help get more customers. And maybe every talk you give, you might give one or two customers, but you, you, you might only get one or two customers. But more importantly, you're going to create an awareness and education about microgreens, which I think is super critical in this day and age because especially if you're living here somewhere you know maybe that doesn't have the best uh, you know education about eating fruits and vegetables you know education is paramount and there can be a lot done now the future of this business is that the farmer really wants to get into selling subscription-based programs to end users because you know they know if they sell to end users they make more money than restaurants uh, but also more importantly they're going to be helping the end user you know, regain or claim greater levels of health by eating some of the best local food that's not shipped in from California. I mean, the prices here in Texas for organic food can get quite expensive, and there's not a big local food movement to my dismay, which is really saddening to me. You know, I really think that there should be more, you should, we should, everybody should consume more local food because it's more sustainable for the planet, or even better yet, grow it yourself. So uh, those are some of my business tips. I think also creating an email list, having good social media following, posting on your social media every day, keeping people engaged, very important, you know, to, uh, to create a, a successful business in the migraines where most people have no clue what they are. I think the last part of this episode, what I want to do with you guys is we're going to go ahead and interview Tamea, the farmer and the owner here and share with you guys more about why she started the farm, some of the different things she's learned about growing migraines, some of the big failures she's had and also talk a bit more about you know, marketing the microgreens and how she could be more successful, but at the same time, um, learn about why 
you know, it, it's not all about the money for her, you know. I mean, if you once again, if you guys are trying to do a get rich quick and grow microgreens for a lot of cash, it is hard work. You will have to do a lot of work to make it happen. And I think it can be done anywhere. Um, but you have to work hard and find a market and be creative about it and not just, uh, you know, give up if it's not working for you. So now I have the pleasure of introducing you guys to Tamea, um, the farmer, the microgreens farmer and owner here of Tamea's microgreens, go figure. And we're going to go ahead and answer some questions about her little farm here and learn more about why she's growing microgreens, why she didn't shut down after two years after not making $100,000 like the video says, right? Um, and all these things. So to me, the first question is, why did you start growing microgreens out of all the different crops in the first place? Okay, uh, five years ago, my mom got diagnosed of stage four cancer. And uh, I started thinking about it, uh, how can I change or what can I do to help her? And I started researching uh, what's the benefits of the food. And I started going to YouTube, of course, and I start uh, looking up different, you know, different resources. And I found the video, which is John made with Larry. You know, I start very interested, I start researching more and more, and uh, contacted Larry, and uh, this is how I started. I went to uh, study to Baltimore of his course, and I got the equipment, build a room, and this is how I started. Cool, so let me get this straight. So you started because your mom had cancer, and did you start the business to make money or for other reasons? No, it was never was my goal uh, make money. Make money is a good thing, of course, but my goal was, of course, uh, uh, spread the information and make people healthier, I guess. You know, this was uh, my first intention of make my business mm. you know not the money money was money is important but not that important for me, for me it was always more important the health and uh, how to spread the information to people how to make people healthier how to try teach them what's a good food what a good diet you know yeah that's my main reason yeah so you probably saw that your you know your mom had cancer and that number one you don't want that to happen to you or put any any other anybody else's daughter through having a parent or a loved one or a husband or wife with cancer and basically you know so you learn about microgreens because they're one of the most anti-cancer foods based on scientific journal published studies and you're like hey how could i eat more of this so me my husband or my, my kids don't get cancer either because we could prevent this from based on what we eat and in my opinion the american diet is basically a cancer causing diet most of the things that people eat unfortunately especially here in Texas, um, you know, with fast food, junk food, processed food, eating out. I know you're already pretty health conscious because you really didn't even need to eat at restaurants. You would always make all yes. the food, prepare the food in, in, indoors. And the other thing I really want people to be aware about is, you know, your background. So you have an, a strong accent. <laughs> so you want to tell everybody where you're from and how you came to be here in Texas. Uh, I am from Hungary. Uh, but my husband is Russian and mm -hmm. we live in Ukraine. Then I have like accent from all three languages, I guess, you know, and we moved here 14 years ago because of my husband's job and uh, moved to Texas right away. And uh, this is how I came here. <laughs> and so before you were, you started your own microgreens business, what were you doing? Okay, I used to work for different companies. My, I, am a, I have a major of master degree of economic and I don't work like economist, of course, because uh, the visa, the green card and everything, how we moved here. And I started, my first job was in Davis Bridal. used to work there and after I worked for a seller, there for different other companies, you know. And after I decided like, no, I have to do my own business, I have to open my own business and here where I am now. Cool. So would you say, uh, you know, when you when you started your own microgreens business, like, do you like, do you make more or less money than what you used to make, number one? Um, I make less money than I used to make, but I am my own boss, and my own boss to my time, my, my patient, my greens, and I'm really love it what I do, and this is the most important thing, and I 
I think for me is do and make what I love, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'd also agree too. So many people don't live consistent with what their values to a job they hate, where they don't like being told they can't be on their cell phone because they're working. And if you're your own boss, you can be on the cell phone as much as you want, but you just don't be on your cell phone when you're trying to water the greens and take care of business and whatnot. Um, so I think that's very important. It's not, and it sh your life should not be focused on money as your primary goal in life. You know, my goal personally is health because I almost lost my health at a young age and that's how I health. I found all the health food and the microgreens and growing food nowadays. And that's why I love to share with you guys because I mean, my, I literally had to turn my health around from, you know, having an incurable disease at the hospital where the doctors told me that I might not make it out alive. So that's how I found this. And so I'm glad even though you're not making as much money, you're doing what you love and have more free time to spend with your family. And more importantly, getting your family to eat healthier and helping the health of people that live here in Dallas. So now they can have microgreens available because you're here growing a really clean product. So to me, I know you started growing microgreens before you went to Larry's training. And if you watch my video, I strongly encourage you guys to do the training. I don't encourage you guys to buy Larry's system without the training. But what you want to share with my viewers, what happened when you tried to you got the system Larry uses and then you started to try to grow microgreens without his training. Yeah, I started growing microgreens without Larry training and it was a big mistake, of <laughs> course, because, you know, I made a room like overheated, like it was 70 Fahrenheit in a room, which is supposed to be very low and I don't had a dehumidifier and I did everything, everything wrong. And Larry training system is amazing and everybody who want to learn how to grow microgreens is how to do it because you know, without it we just really don't know what we do you know it's helped me a lot really and Larry's help us growers always you know we have a new question you know we can email him or, or text him or you know be in a group uh, like we have a microgreen group Facebook you know and everybody willing to answer questions if you have any problems it's amazing yeah, I mean, I definitely encourage Larry's system. And here's the thing, man, no other place or that I know of has the, the working system that really works, that, is, that got, got it down and, com and it make, makes kind of, on some level, complex things simple. Um, you know, you're going to spend a little bit of money for it, but it's definitely worth your time invested because otherwise trying to learn things on your own and go through the school of hard knocks, man, when you're trying to run a business, you've got to have consistent product available and ready on time or you're going to lose customers and that's definitely not a good thing. So talking about customers, Tamia, so you know, you haven't had the best, well you have had the best of luck growing, which we'll talk about in a little bit, you haven't had the best of luck finding customers because I know Larry will train on what he knows, which is selling to restaurants, which has worked for him to make over $100,000 a year when he used to grow. He's now focused on training and teaching people now to duplicate his system that he did, that he was doing, um, but you didn't have the exact same results. And, you know, I, I like to make videos. I mean, here, you know, my video says make over 100000 a year, which is possible, but it may not be your exact results. Your, your, your results may vary. She consistently, for the last two years, made about $36,000, you know, gross income. And so she hasn't made that money. And she's even thought about closing her business more than once because it's like, man, it's, we're not making that much money. But you want to talk about, um, number one, why haven't you closed your business even though you don't make $100,000? <laughs> okay, number one. Uh, number one, why I don't close my business is because my mom, you know, and my mom, thankfully, she's still alive, okay, she's still fighting After cancer. five years, five stage years, four. Stage four, yes, and um, I just couldn't close down something which is I open for her. For her. You know, this was my, my main reason I never closed down. And I still, still believe, I still believe is out there a lot of people who want to be healthy, who want to... Uh, have a healthy diet who want to look at differently what we don't do right right like for eating habits you know and we can make ourselves like different lifestyle you know and I still believe out there a lot of people like I believe we are you know and um, I tried many many you know, I tried the farmer market uh, for two years and uh, different markets like Dallas farmer market, Frisco farmer market, like, you know, different markets all around, like, you know, Dallas. But this product is not for, for the market. I mean, and I start focusing for personal clients. I have personal clients who I know what they want, 
each week, you know, I grow for them personally, and I have a few of the restaurants who I deliver. You know, and my focus is most for, for personal clients, you know, for people who are really health conscious, you know, and want to have a healthy diet and really looking, my product is the best in the world, you know. <laughs> sure, so I think really then, it, you know, you haven't found the restaurant to sell to, the farmer's market, you weren't successful because people go to farmer's market aside from maybe like me and maybe a, a small handful of people that go there actually to buy healthy food, especially here in Texas, in my opinion, most people are there just for the social event, the social time, to buy the pre-prepared food that neither of us would eat <laughs> because we don't know how it's prepared or what's, what's in it or what it's made with. Um, and that could be a challenge, I guess. So I think definitely checking your guys' where you live to see what kind of people live where you live, right? So in my, uh, you know, opinion, to me, you have to do a lot more education. I did give some, uh, you know, my suggestions earlier in this video about that. Um, like, basically, like, I've literally become a gardening expert from not only doing it, but also making a lot of videos to, share, to, to show that I have expertise in this. So I think, you know, education is a big component. Even a lot of this stuff is for free. You're not charging people to give them classes on how to grow microgreens. You're showing them how to grow it yourself. And maybe they can do it for themselves because we just want microgreens to be out there more whether you sell them or not. And you know how to do it exactly because every time it, it looks, this, these microgreens here look amazing. Um, and I haven't seen every microgreens farm I visit, they don't always look amazing. Giving free class on how to grow microgreens, also in that class, share with people how to use them, so how to prepare them and cook them, or in, in my case, not cook them, because when you cook them, you lose some of the valuable nutrients in there, um, you know. And then also, you know, share with people that, you know, you have, a, you also can do additional hand-holding trainings, like for more money, like private one-on-one -on -one <laughs> trainings or whatever, if you want to charge them a bunch of money and all these things. And so you could create additional revenue than just from you know selling the actual microgreens. But then also at the end of at, at, at the end of the uh, class, of course, you're going to let people know that hey, you have a microgreen subscription service, so that people could buy it if they don't want to grow it. And you know, here's the thing: most people are not going to grow their food. I mean, I applaud you guys for watching this video almost to the end here, because it tells me that you guys are serious about growing your own food and or starting your own microgreens business. And you're going to have some more ideas on how to do that successfully. So I think that's one approach I would take and also, you know, trying to find groups and people in the area that are your exact clientele. So, I mean, at the, you know, farmer's markets in the area, you're not really finding that health conscious person. Right? Maybe going out to people that are in a raw foods community, for example, people in a raw foods generally are doing it for their health. And, but just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're going to be into healthy food because I've been to plenty of vegan events that they just serve processed junk vegan food, which I am not a fan of. I do not advocate you guys eating junk vegan food or actually junk any food i encourage you guys to eat you know fresh local high quality food you know as much as possible so yeah you definitely have some challenges there but you also have some opportunity so that you can prove and get this out and spread this to more people and hopefully next time i come back i'm going to see your whole room full of seven 12 racks absolutely full <laughs> and i can't even walk in here or film because it's going to be so yeah. full because you're like John, I'm selling so much microgreens now and I'm feeding so many people and I've like got so many testimonials and that's the other thing, use testimonials to your advantage. Find some of your clients that have helped them heal themselves or have gotten you know, results from eating your microgreens and share that with other people because people just simply don't know what microgreens could do as much as there's lots of research out there. I mean, this is a new food. I mean, it's like eating a space alien because people like, what are those? Like, especially here in Texas. I mean, if it's in California, Maybe you don't have to have a strong educational component as much, but here, I mean, maybe if you're in Austin, maybe people are a little bit more familiar, but yeah, definitely Texas, you got, got some challenges ahead. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Tamea, um, how do you include more microgreens in your diet since, you know, I know many farmer's markets you went to, you sold that, and you brought home microgreens. What do you do with them so that you and your family can eat healthier? Well, we eat a ton of salads for <laughs> sure. Any leftover microgreens what we have from market, I just made a huge salad from it, you know, or juice it, you know, the uh, sunflower or pea shoots, you know, microgreens, I juice them, of course, you know, make smoothies from them. But the other type of microgreens, I just make a big, big salad, you know, like four or five packs of microgreens, and we have that like a couple of times a day. We eat a lot of microgreens, and I can tell like it's it's have a very very big plus for our health, you know. Now, what differences have you seen personally from eating your microgreens be than before you ate your microgreens? Okay, um, like you have really nice skin, I think. Thank you. <laughs> and um, my husband had very high cholesterol, 
you know, and the sense like a lust half year, you know, he did like three months ago, he did a blood test and his cholesterol is perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, the doctor like shocked. She was like, I don't understand like what's going on, you know, but it's unbelievable, you know, and my blood work is perfect too, thank God, you know, and thank you about my skin. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so change your diet, change your health and change your appearance even. I mean, eating more phytonutrient rich foods such as the microgreens and other colorful Vegetables have been shown that you can become more attractive actually in scientific published studies actually You know and not look super, you know, just like unhealthy and pasty and all this stuff So anyways, uh, another thing I want to talk to you about since you are an expert grower Although you need definitely need work with the marketing. Yeah. Um, every microgreens that I see here looks great great um, What would you say are your biggest problems that you had to go through or learning experiences as I like to call them? You know or biggest mistakes that you made growing and then how could somebody, you know, benefit from knowing these mistakes so that they don't do it? Uh, because mistakes, I mean, with growing everything was perfect. I don't have any problem. I'm because sorry. you follow Larry exactly because you're... I, I don't want to you're, lie, you're you are from know? Hungary and you, yeah. can, and you gotta follow, you know, like I think Europeans in general kind of like are more like exacting, like, okay, I do it like this, 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 and you follow the directions and most Americans, yeah. oh, I could kind of half-ass it, put a little bit of this, put a little, no, well, man, you gotta do it exactly, exactly. right, Exactly. And, and then you're gonna get the results. Yeah, really, So I you mean, did, you're perfect, you're perfect. I mean, really, I mean, I, mean, I don't ever, ever had any problem. I would lie if I had, really, with growing, I never had any problem, like. Until I, you, well, 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 you had a problem before you started Yeah, the absolutely, course, absolutely, training. after the Larry's course, you know, and I did everything, like, Exactly how he teach me, you know, teach us. You yeah, know? I mean, you duplicated the room better than anybody I've seen. It's my husband. You know, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, we never run to any problem with growing. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, that's the truth. Okay, that's a... okay, yeah, maybe the sunflower. Okay. And oh, but sun... he doesn't teach sunflower. Yeah, he don't teach sunflower, but my clients really like sunflower microgreens, and I grow them them a sun sunflower court court. What is called? You know. That it's a some well, not a sunflower. It's a coconut soil. The coconut you know? coir. Yeah. yeah the this coconut is how I'm soil. growing down. The loose soil. Yeah. yeah, loose soil. And that's it. I mean, everything goes smooth and everything grows perfectly. All right. So let's talk about the the the, the easiest microgreens or fastest microgreens to grow. Since like if somebody's new and they've never grown anything before, I know you deal with them, many different microgreens. I know you grow nasturtiums, which have a longer grow time, yes. which I wouldn't necessarily recommend. No. Um, but. Um, what are some of the easiest ones that you recommend people grow? Maybe? The easiest to grow is the broccoli, the radish, and the pea shoots. This tree is the easiest to grow, and the, not fastest because the pea shoots have like 14, 15 days, but the fastest is the radish is eight days, basically, you know. And but the easiest one is the broccoli, radish, and pea shoots. Wow. Know? And the leek, yes, leeks. Oh, leeks, yeah. yeah. Leeks I mean, are the number four too. Yeah. What would I do? I would probably. I'm not a big fan of pea shoots. I just don't really like the taste, but I would I would grow the leeks and I'd grow the broccoli because there's lots of scientific studies on broccoli. Yes. I think I'd also grow the radishes too because and red cabbage. Oh, red, red cabbage, cabbage also. Yeah, oh, and that looks like that has the color, the, the cool red color too. Yeah, it's a cool red color too. Yeah, so it's actually cool one of the recommendations I would make, especially to microgreens growers, is grow more red color mm -hmm. um, plants because most you know things that are vegetables are green, so I think red really kind of helps pop for the eyes and also the two just knowing what I know about nutrition. You know, red colored plants are at least two to three or four, or maybe even more times more nutritious just because that red pigment that they make known as the anthocyanins or maybe betalanes, depending on what plant it is. If you had to do it all over again, knowing that you make about $36,000 a year net at this point, now hopefully it goes up in the future, um, you know, would you do all this again? Because I know this the build out of this room and all the equipment costs you $25,000, but you paid for that within the first year, yes. but then also it's been a lot of work and, and different things. Um, would you do it again? Yeah, absolutely, yes. Why? 100% yes. Why? The health benefits mm. and everything. What, like a health benefit, what's this for my family, you know, it's my mom too, because my mom growing in Hungary microgreens too, you know, and she eat it every day. Is you know, she I using Larry's it, system? No. <laughs> she literally <laughs> says she... <laughs> She using Tibetan system, which is I created for her because you know it's not. You can't get all the we, different things. Yeah, you can get all these things in Hungary, of course, but she using different system, but it's work for her, you know, work for us, and I would do it again, no doubt about that, hundred percent.
Yeah, so once again guys, it's not all about the money, although yes, it's important to have, make a living or at least have a husband that is uh, paying the bills for you <laughs> while, you're, while you're experimenting and trying to get your business up and growing uh, more successfully. So to me, if somebody lives here in the Dallas area, I know within 20 miles you will deliver for free, but yes. people could come and pick up things and that. How can somebody learn more about you, your microgreens, get a hold of you wanna, if they want to buy microgreens, if they don't want to have to you know, I learn mean, how to grow them themselves? We are on Instagram, you know, we have a Facebook page and we have a Microgreens LLC web page where uh, they can contact me and, you know, anytime call me or text me, you know, or email me, answering all the phone calls, all the text message and all the emails, you know, they can find me. All right, Thanks wonderful. Please. Yeah, I'll post all her links down below so you can follow her on Instagram and all these things and get a hold of her if you live in the greater Dallas area and want to get some uh, fresh grown microgreens, some of the highest quality that I've seen. Uh, for sure. So I think that's pretty much it for this episode. Actually, I got to fly back to Las Vegas tonight, so I'm glad to be home since it's been a 10-day trip for me, pretty long. And I uh, was in uh, yeah, uh, Florida, South Florida, and now Texas, and I'm headed home. So uh, wish me well, and wish me safe travels. But if you guys like this video here at Tomatoes Microgreens, hey, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, be sure to share this video with somebody else that you think it can help so that they can learn more about how easy it is to grow my greens, the benefits, and also if they should start a business to make $100,000 a year, like it says in my original video. Um, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new upcoming episodes of coming out at every three to four or every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or will be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as my videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. I'll put a couple of the videos I've done with Larry in the past right down below. Um, you know, common mistakes about growing microgreens, common mistakes about, you know, the business of microgreens, and also just a tour of his basically spare bedroom where that he converted to a grow room where he did used to make over $100,000 a year. So with that, my name is John Fuller, microgreens.com. We'll see you next time. Until then, keep on growing.